Howdy! Welcome to The Console Log, a YouTube show about JavaScript news and coding in general. This is the week of November 27th through December 3rd, and there were some fun things that happened this past week that I just can't wait to tell you about. First big news item of the week is that everybody's favorite JavaScript framework, React, had a new release, version 16.2.0. <laughs> I love new releases. <laughs> they are so much fun, and this release in particular is very fun. Why? Why? Well, in React 16, React team added a new way to deal with arrays in React where you could work with a fragment. However, with fragments, it wasn't the most pleasant experience because you would have to return an array from your components and then have a comma to separate each element in that array, which was the most fun to use. Instead, in React 16.2.0, there is now a first class component called fragment that you can now wrap your arrays in to create that new array of items. What this means is that now, instead of having to deal with nested divs in your React structure, you can actually use a fragment to actually create a very neat DOM hierarchy that you see when you actually inspect the HTML. Even further than that, in React 16.2.0, there is now a new JSX syntax to also do the same thing with this kind of weird looking thing of these double arrows that are the same thing as the React fragment type as well. The JSX desugars to fragment, and you're back to where you are. Very cool, this is a huge productivity boost when using React, as now you don't have to worry about having to have an array of elements. You can just use this nice JSX syntax to say that, hey, this is a fragment, and then React is on its very merry way. Also stay tuned on this channel, I'm going to have a full in-depth guide about the new features of React, so if you are interested about that, please do turn back again later when that does hit the interwebs. Number two in the world of WebAssembly, my new thing that I'm very, very jazzed about, is uh, Rust, which is the low-level language, has now added direct support to compile Rust code to WebAssembly code. What does that mean? Uh, previously, to use to get Rust code to WebAssembly code, you have to take some Rust code and then compile it to an LLVM IR, the intermediate representation, then take that IR code and pass it through this other library called ECMAScripten, which is very hard to say five times fast, let alone one time fast, and then ECMAScripten will take that LLVM IR code and then finally output WebAssembly code. That is a lot of tool chains in your toolbox. But now in Rust, they have now added a first class support to take some Rust code, set a flag, and out comes WebAssembly code. So that is one step closer to making WebAssembly a very easy and accessible target for applications. Again, WebAssembly is growing, I'm excited about it. I also wanna do an in-depth dive into WebAssembly because that thing is just gonna be cool. In the land of NPM, two awesome things happened this past week. One, version 5.6.0 was released, which the notable feature of that is that now it is fully cross-platform package lock compatible. What that means is that now when you use the package lock JSON in NPM, you go on a Linux box or a Mac box or a Windows box, that will have the same behavior across all of those devices. So that is great when you are sharing that across multiple machines. And then the other very cool thing that was announced in a tweet is that there is a new tool being added to NPM that will make it uh, easy to consolidate conflicts in the package lock JSON file. This is a feature that I believe Yarn has already and having it come to NPM is great because there are many times that I've had conflicts in my package lock file and that is quite the headache to resolve manually. So if that can be done by a machine, then I'm ever so grateful to you NPM team. So thank you so much for that. Staying in the land of tooling, Prettier, the everyone's favorite code formatter, there was a PR that opened up this past week that is adding new support for Python a non-JavaScript language. I mean, to be fair, Prettier already supports HTML, CSS, but this is like bigger because it's just a whole different like programming language. There's an interesting discussion in that PR thread, but this could be the first step towards Prettier being a more general purpose utility for formatting things. Python already has Pep8, but as the author of the PR describes, he wasn't that happy with what Pep8 was doing, which is why he turned to uh, Prettier but we'll see what happens in the future because uh, I have fallen head over heels in love with Prettier. And if you haven't used it already, I definitely recommend it makes your coding experience a lot better. But uh, Prettier and Python, uh, two Ps makes a lot of happy engineers. 
And then let's keep going with the whole Python idea and staying in the world of Python. The most famous Python framework, Django, released their hugely anticipated, for me, version 2.0. Python has now gone a whole 2.0 after too many years at the 1.x series, but uh, forget that. We're gonna have to wait the big deal about Python 2 is that it no longer supports the Python 2.7 version. So you have to actually upgrade to Python 3 Plus, which is going to be good to move the whole Python community forward a little bit. Another awesome feature of Django 2.0 is that it has a new improved uh, simplified URL routing syntax. If you do make URL routings, it's now a little bit easier to use. But uh, as a front-end engineer mostly, I do interact with Django backends from time to time. So having this be there is something that I'm excited to then have better support for. So uh, Python's been uh, pretty cool this week in my world. And with that, another week of the console log comes to a close. Hope you learned some new things. I hope you get to try out the new React 16 fragment syntax. I have been playing around with it in my own little sandbox and it is quite pretty especially the DOM output, and I hope you had a good week of coding and programming. What is the difference between coding and programming? Is it just different words for the same thing? Are they synonyms? Is that true? Well, anyways, I hope you have a new good week coming up. The year is almost over, and we have learned so much this year. But until then, until we meet again, which is going to be in another week's time, I say uh, a goodbye, and may your code be as pretty as the weather. <laughs>